Shalom, my friends. My little brother Scotty put a video up uh, recently. I'll have a link to it in the more info section under this video for you to check out because um, uh, he does such a wonderful job uh, not only with uh, scripture prophecy but his video presentations and his uh, his graphics uh, are really cool and he's uh, he talks about the uh, constellations the signs uh, in the Shamaim that Yeshua told us to watch for he said there would be signs uh, meaning uh, you know the stars the sun and the moon uh, to watch for and uh, Scotty uh, he was talking uh, about Elohim with Job that's Yov uh, chapter 38 and uh, verse 31, Yahweh asks Job, Yov, do you bind the bands of Hima or loosen the cords of Kesil? Verse 32, do you bring out the constellations in its season? Or do you lead the bear with its sons? Uh, and you know Scotty pointed that out and um, I was sitting there thinking oh we got some cool information about that because where Yahweh asked him you know do you bind the bands of Kima he's talking about the Pleiades and basically saying you know do you hold it together well we now know only recently in in terms of history, that the seven stars of the Pleiades are truly a grouping of 250 suns that are all traveling together in one common direction. And uh, Yahweh asks, Yo, also, he says, You know, do you loosen the cords of Kesil? That's referring to the three stars which appear to be fixed in a rigid straight line forming what's called the belt uh, of the constellation of Orion and we now know again only recently in, in uh, history that these three stars are not fixed at all um, but that they are being loosed if you will and will eventually move out of their positions. Um, then in verse 32, uh, Yahweh asks him, he says, Do you bring out the constellations in its season? Do you lead the bear with its son or with its sons? And it's always been believed that Arcturus was a fixed star, but we now know. You know, I keep emphasizing that because science is always talking about what they know. Oh, we know this. But then, you know, a year later, they, well, we thought that, but now we know this. They always think they know, and, they, and they're constantly confessing <laughs> that they don't. Um, but uh, at any rate, not only when these scriptures were written, science uh, thought these things but only very recently you know come to find out that that we're wrong um, we now know that Arcturus is a runner a runaway star traveling at 257 miles per second and that the combined force of every star we know of would not be capable to turn Arcturus from its course. Um, there's there's a couple of things that come to my mind, you know, when I read these uh, wonderful verses with uh, Job, Job, and that is, um, you know, 
we should try to remember that uh, we cannot know the Father's ways. The Father's ways are not man's ways. And uh, when the Father does something that doesn't make sense to us, we have to remind ourselves how little we know. And I always, I always tell other people, you know, they go, why, why did God do this? You know, why did he do that? My, my immediate answer to those kind of questions is always, don't question your father, ever. You don't ever question your father. You just do what he says, and you don't question it. And, you know, if you've been praying to him and asking him to, uh, you know, make certain things move certain ways in your life, and uh, things turn out in ways that you didn't expect. Don't question him. You don't question your father. He's doing something that you don't understand. And he will never let you down. He will never forsake you. But he's not going to do it your way. Um, <laughs> that's just one thing. But really more to the point uh, on this video is that um, the father... Um, created everything we see. When you look up at the sky, it's, uh, it's a phenomenal sight. We all know that. And it's his creation. And uh, no one, not only could no one ever do these things, but uh, no one will ever fully understand what's going on up there. And um, especially after watching that video, this one here, the Star of Bethlehem. You can, you can catch this on YouTube. Um, just type in the Star of Bethlehem. Where is his name? Rick Larson. R-I-C-K-L-A-R-S-O-N. You can type that in, uh, in the search tool on YouTube. And... <laughs> It's, it's wonderful uh, to watch, and will teach you much about um, the stars in the Shamayim. But uh, especially after watching that one, I came to a revelation that when you look up at uh, a beautiful evening filled with stars, and boy, the other night uh, we had one of those low hanging uh, autumn moons that look twice the size, you know, those look bigger. I think Scotty explains that one too. Uh, the beauty is amazing, but I look up and I say, you know what? What you're looking at is a book. It's literally a book that you and I don't know how to read, you know. Uh, if we go back uh, two, three, and four thousand years and look at the stories in the scriptures, you have to understand, and this pointed out, I believe, in this video of the Star of Bethlehem, that people, you know, a lot of, oftentimes they would sleep on their rooftops. Uh, certainly, they didn't have all this light that we have. I mean, I, I live in a pretty populated area here in central New Jersey, and um, there's, a, there's a lot of light, you know, from electricity and street lights and highways and cars and houses and you name it, that... Um, blocks much of what we see and and I can't help but remember when I lived uh, way out upstate New York uh, with my wife when uh, my daughter Michelle was first born we used to go out in the driveway at night and we were out in the country we were out in the sticks and I'd look up and and uh, you could see the uh, Milky Way <laughs> it was man what a beautiful sight I mean you could really see it but my point uh, being that uh, thousands of years ago, with the Jews especially, laying out on the rooftops at night with nothing obscuring those evening skies and, and looking at uh, the stars every night, you know, you get familiar. You become very familiar with it. Well, um, there's the Mazaroth, M-A-Z-Z-A-R-O-T-H. Matzaroth. 
the Father gave to Adam. Uh, Satan has distorted that. We all know it as the zodiac, with sign or you. Divination, abomination. Um, but uh, the Father created that. Uh, the Matsuroth, and it's the 12 signs uh, that we know of the zodiac. And it's a story of salvation. And, and he gave it to Adam, Adam. Uh, to teach him about his plan right from the very beginning uh, about salvation. And, you know, it begins uh, with Virgo, uh, the virgin, birth. And you go all the way around and where you wind up with Leo, the lion of the tribe of Judah, Yahuda. So, um, <laughs> these, uh, it's a book. I wish I knew how to read it better than I do. But um, Yeshua told us that um, there would be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. Um, not only, you know, telling us of uh, the Father's plan for salvation, but also pointing at what is most commonly known as the seven Jewish feasts, which is terrible, they're not feasts, the uh, Aramaic Hebrew word is uh, Moedim, Kodesh appointments, there's seven of them, I guess I'm going to have to do a, a study on those pretty soon, but uh, there are seven, uh, four spring Moedim and three fall or autumn Moedim. The four spring Moedim appointments have been fulfilled. You know, starting with uh, Passover and, and the sacrificial lamb when, uh, when Yeshua came as uh, Messiah and, uh, you know, he was crucified and then this, that, and the other thing. And, um, up to uh, Acts where the Ruach, Yeshua went back to be home with the Father and he sent the Ruach to be our comforter. Um, that was uh, Pentecost. Those are the, uh, the, the appointments that were fulfilled. Well, there's three that are yet to be fulfilled. And um, the one that I'm focusing on here is Yom Teruach, the Feast of Trumpets. It's not Yom. Yom means waters. It's Yom means day of. And Teruah is the blowing of the trumpets. Um, but in Bereshith, Genesis chapter 1, uh, verse uh, 14, And Elohim said, Let lights come to be in the expanse of the Shamayim to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs. Ot is the Hebrew and, and it's capitalized here in uh, the Hallelujah Scriptures, appointed times, Moedim, and for days and years. Um, but that they are for signs, number one, and number two, uh, for the Moedim, for Yahweh's Kodesh appointments with mankind. Well, um, I'm not going to get into uh, dates for two reasons. Number one, um, I never would get into dates in terms of uh, the net chetef, that's the Aramaic Hebrew word, or the harpazo, that's the Greek word, or the rapture, which is the uh, English word that's gotten from the Latin Vulgate. Uh, you know, to me, the anointed word here to use when you're referring or talking about the rapture, the anointed word is net chetef. And it means kidnapped. <laughs> I love it. But, um, you know, no one knows the day or the hour. Uh, and, of course, Yom Teruah, the Feast of Trumpets, is the feast that is... Um, the, uh, the feast of which the day and the hour is unknown. It all points at that. I mean, we can go into a whole study, and maybe uh, if I do one on the feasts, uh, you know, we'll cover all that. But 
Um, number one, you know, I, I don't get into dates because no one knows the day or the hour, so um, you don't want to be date setting in terms of the net chatef. Um, there's one thing that everyone who always tries to say, oh, you know, the rapture is going to happen on uh, Wednesday at 2 o'clock, anyone who sets dates throughout all of history, and there have been many, as we all know, they all have one thing in common. They're all always wrong. You can't set the date. Um, however, I believe that because these Moedim are Yahweh's Kodesh appointments with mankind and that Yom Teruah is all about uh, the Net Chetef, I believe that the uh, Net Chetef will happen on that Moed, on that feast day. Reason number two for not setting dates. Um, these calendars, nobody can agree on them. Uh, they're such a mess, you know. Um, I tend to go along as does uh, Scotty. Uh, that's Scotty Clark. YouTube.com slash Eternal Rhythm Flow. Um, you could just go to ScottyClark.com and you'll see his YouTube channel. S-C-O-T-T-I-E-C-L-A-R-K-E dot com. Uh, we both, you know, agree that probably the best calendar source out there is TorahCalendar.com. Um, but uh, honestly, I'm not sure, you know, I haven't like delved into the study of calendars and things. Um, I'm not really interested in it, to be quite honest with you. Um, I don't, personally, I don't feel it's so crucial to be exact about which day, the hour, uh, you know, I should be doing certain things with the Father, you know, I just don't think it's that crucial. These things have been confused, uh, time is, uh, kind of skewed in a, in a lot of ways. So, I'm not concerned about that, but every year in the month of September, there is Yom Teruah, and that's coming up in another week or so, and uh, uh, so I think, ah, Abba, could it be this year? Is this the Moed? This year that we come home, I want to, uh, to come home. Uh, we are not of this world. And uh, I know that very well, that I am out of this world. I've always known that, and, and I long to be home in a country of my own. Um, and so I'm always very eager to see that moment when the net chetef occurs. It's, um, you know, I'd like to think it's going to happen this year. Personally, I feel like it's too good to be true. However, that's just how it's going to be when it happens. Like this is going to be too. This is too good to be true. It's just, it is too good to be true, in a metaphorical way of saying it. Because uh, it's awfully good, but it is true. It is going to happen one day, and it could very well be this year. Um, if not, be like, oh well, hang tight. Uh, maybe on Yom Teruah. 2014. Uh, and I'm, you know, I'm hot on the subject right now because of uh, these tetrads I talked about recently in my Prophecy Update 2013. Um, again, I'm going to point you over to Scotty because he covers these tetrads beautifully and very clearly. But these tetrads um, are uh, important. Um, there's something else I wanted to say. What was that? Well, anyway, now's a good time to take a little break. Check this out. I'll be right back. My book has arrived. Road to Paradise. How to Find the Way.
Learn how you can develop your own deeply rewarding relationship with the Creator of all things. It's an interesting read, my friends, filled with laughter, amazement, and also revelation for you about your walk with Elohim. Go to WatchAllen.com and order my book today. Thank you. But, uh, you know, I've heard some say, look, you know, the Tetrads, it's not, it's not in the scriptures, so ignore it. Well, I understand. However, Yeshua said, there will be signs in the stars, the sun and the moon. Yeshua said, every time he's ever talking about the Nechetef, um, even in things like the parable of the ten virgins, you know, at the end, he always says, watch, therefore, watch, 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 watch. So, um, and you know, if, if um, you do recognize that you're an alien here and that you do desire to be in a country of your own, as the word says, and then you want to go home and, and, and you can't wait to go home and you're hopeful about going home especially getting out of here before the day of his wrath. Anyway, uh, these tetrads are coming up. 2014 and 2015, so that's another reason to think. It could very well be that the Netchetef is going to uh, occur in a couple of weeks, or next year, or the year after. Hallelujah. Uh, the time is uh, close. And also, when there are these uh, blood moons uh, and uh, special signs in the Shamayim that occur on a Moedim, if they don't happen on a Moed, then it's really me. It's just, you know, an eclipse, no big deal. They happen all the time. Or it's just a blood moon, no big deal. Happens all the time. But if it's happening on one of Yahweh's Moedim, this, you, you know, this is something to watch and pay attention to. Uh, Thessalonikim 1, that's 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5. Now, brothers, as to the times and the seasons, as to the Moedim, you do not need to be written to, for you yourselves know very well that the day of Yahweh comes as a thief in the night. Kidnap. <laughs> Kidnapper. For when they say, peace and safety, then suddenly destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. But you, brothers, believers, are not in darkness so that this Day, capital D, should overtake you as a thief. This is why I've always said, when the Nechetef happens, uh, those who are chosen, they're going to know it before it happens. I think, um, don't misunderstand me, my friends. I don't mean, you know, like a year beforehand, they're going to know the date, you know, nothing like that. It could be a couple of days before it happens. This uh, Something's up, you know. It could be a couple of hours. Uh, it could be a couple of minutes. Something. It, a knowing. I believe there's going to be a knowing. And it might only be just a few moments before it actually occurs. It might be more than that. I don't know. But I know that it will not be just like the Ruach is telling us here. But you, believers, you're not in darkness. So that this day should overtake you as a thief. It's not going to overtake you as a thief because you're not in darkness. Um, however, when it comes to the Net Ketef, I uh, implore you to be receiving the filling of the Ruach, the filling of His Spirit. It's one thing, and I talked about this in my recent video, 
last week was it, whatever, uh, about baptism, immersion. It's one thing, you know, to be, to receive the indwelling Ruach. It's another thing to be immersed by the Ruach, by Yeshua immersing you in his Ruach time and time again. Um, and I pointed at the parable of the ten virgins. Look, again, the ten virgins, they all had lamps. That means they all had the light. Who is the light? Yeshua. I am the light. They all had Yeshua. Uh, they all had oil in their lamps. They all, oil is the Ruach. They all had the Ruach. Five of them brought extra oil. Five of them had more of the Ruach. Hello? Doesn't that tell you? There's the filling of the Ruach. Um, now, all ten of them, they, they knew the Master was coming. The Adon was coming. They all went to meet their Adon. They all had the light. They all had oil. But... Um, five of them did not have enough oil and their light went out is that where we're at in you know current events um, Second Thessalonians chapter 2 uh, the coming as to the coming of our Adon Yeshua HaMashiach and our gathering together to him, we ask you, don't become easily unsettled in your mind or troubled either by spirit or word or by letter as if from us, as if the day of Yahweh has come, the tribulation. Let no one deceive you in any way because the falling away is to come first. The um, falling away, I believe the Hallelujah Scriptures translation team could have done a better job right there uh, by saying that the uh, ah I can't think of it Scotty and I had a word for it <laughs> um, he'll remind me and then I'll come back and I'll put a footnote or an annotation on the, uh, the video at any rate in the Greek the word there is apo which literally means talks about something being removed from the surface of something. Um, and uh, so, you know, you could read that by saying that um, the uh, netchatef is to come first and then the man of lawlessness is to be revealed. Which, you know, is kind of repeated down here in verse uh, 7. The secret of lawlessness is already at work until he who now restrains it, that's the Ruach, comes, Hallelujah Scriptures here says, comes out of the midst. Other uh, versions say is taken. And the Greek word there is genomahi. I, again, I don't, I don't know what the translation team is doing here about coming out of the midst because the Greek word there is genomahi and uh, it means thundered, awakened, vanished, altered, assembled, and, here's the kicker, it has to do with a marriage. Now, other uh, versions getting back to uh, 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 2, um, verse uh, 3, where other versions talk about apostasy. And um, I believe that's accurate too. And that's where I was at before that led me over here because I was talking about, you know, there's this falling away, this people turning away from the Word, people turning away from the Father. Um, apostasy. Um, walking away from their belief in Elohim. And, you know, we see that only too plainly. That is going on. And, um, you know, that's what I was saying before. Is that where we're at? You know, 
parable of the ten virgins, five of them didn't have enough oil, their lights went out, they had to go get more oil. Um, is that was is that the falling away? I mean they their interest wasn't strong enough, so they didn't have as much of the Ruach. They went away. The Adon came, opened the door, the five virgins who had the extra Ruach, they went in with the Adon. The other five came back later and the door was closed and Yeshua, after finishing that story, he says, Watch therefore, because you don't know the day or the hour. You know, that's, that's what I'm, uh, I'm talking to you about in this video. You know, Yom Teruah is coming. Watch. Be, be attentive. Don't get freaked out about it. Don't get carried away about it. You know, what was going to happen today, tomorrow, the next day? What if it doesn't? Who cares? If it happens this year or not, who cares? It's not, you know, it's in the Father's hands. No one else's. There's nothing you can do about it. If it happens, there's nothing you can do about it. If it doesn't happen, there's nothing you can do about it. If you have been chosen to be in the net chatef, hallelujah, there's nothing you can do to be chosen. And if you're not chosen, I mean, look, the five virgins, they were believers. They had the light. They had the ruach. They came to meet the master. But they weren't chosen. There are believers who are not going to be taken in the Nechatev. The Nechatev is a very select thing. And there's nothing, you know. Anyway, you know, if it happens, it doesn't happen. The, the, it's people who get you worked up about it. Oh, it's coming Wednesday. You know, get ready. Um, stay away from those kind of people. Uh, people who are prophesying dates and things. Stay away from those people. And keep yourself away from getting caught up about the Nechatef. Oh, it's coming, you know, it's coming. And, and you know, all right, you know, it is coming. It's we're every day, we're one day closer to it, no matter how you read it. We're always one day closer to going home in one way or another. Um, but, uh, you know, I just admonish you, you know, don't get bent out of shape about it. Um, pray about it. Be encouraged. Maybe it's going to happen. Uh, I, th I think it's going to happen, happen sooner than any of us think. Um, but don't get so worked up about it that uh, if it doesn't happen this year that you're all depressed and whatnot. You know, that's, that only means that you've been in the flesh. Um, and, you know, with that kind of attitude, it can happen and you weren't taken anyway. No, the attitude is... The love of His coming. The love of seeing Him. The love of being home and away from this crazy world where we don't belong. All this darkness and confusion that's going on. Not, uh, not an attitude of uh, the flesh of like, are you going? I'm going. It's coming Wednesday, 2 o'clock. You know, i got to figure it out. I know exactly, you know, I know. Remember what I said, you know, about... In my video about uh, immersion, uh, I got to get away from this ownership thing. I own it. I know. I'm sure. No, we don't know anything until it happens. Scotty uh, mentioned uh, in Revelation four that the uh, the Netkatef is mentioned uh, where uh, Yochanan John. He says, the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, come up, come up here, and I shall show you what has to take place after this. Come up here. And then, you know, he's in the Shamaim, and uh, he sees those dressed in white. Those are the ones that were taken in the Nechatev. But also, um, in chapter 3, there is the uh, Church of Philadelphia, uh, who everybody... Everybody wants to be in that one, you know, because that's the uh, the church that gets taken in the Nech Chetev. That's um, chapter 3, uh, verse uh, 7, And to the messenger of the assembly in Philadelphia write, He who is Kodesh, he who is true, he who has the key of Dawid, David, 
He who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens says this, I know your works. See, I have put before you an open door and no one is able to shut it that you have little power. Yet, you've guarded my word and have not denied my name. See, I'm giving up those of the congregation of Satan who say they are Yahudim and are not, but lie. See, I'm making them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you because you have guarded my word of endurance. Endurance. Patience. I also shall guard you from the hour of trial which shall come upon all the world to try those who dwell on the earth. What's that talking about? It's talking about the tribulation. I shall also, I also shall guard you from the hour of trial, the tribulation, which shall come upon all the world to try those who dwell on the earth. Throughout Revelation, you always you see those who are earth dwellers and those who are heaven dwellers. And those who dwell on the earth, uh, those who go through the trip. But uh, here where he says, um, I shall guard you from the hour. That word from, in the Greek there, that's the word ek. It means out of, not through. Some people like to say, oh, he's going to protect us through the hour of trial. We're going through the tribulation. Uh, if that's the way you see it, see ya. <laughs> Uh, if that's the way you want it, that's probably the way you'll get it. No, he's saying, I shall keep you out of, ek, out of the tribulation. The Father always um, keeps those who are his um, out of the times of his wrath. Um, <laughs> yeah, I rambled on. I kind of did a free form on this. I just wanted to put this out there. Um, there's a lot going on, you know, not only the tetrads and, you know, Egypt. Um, you can look at uh, Isaiah 19 and Isaiah 17. And you'll see what's going on in the news. Uh, Isaiah 19 is a prophecy about, about Egypt. And it talks about exactly what's going on in the news. Brother against brother, kingdom against kingdom. It talks about the Nile drying up. and I mean, these things, uh, these things are on the news. Uh, chapter 17 is uh, an oracle against uh, Damasek, that's Damascus, and Syria. Um, these things are brewing heavily, and um, like I said in my um, prophecy update recently, that um, I believe the tetrads are uh, going to be, uh, it could be the beginning of the tribulation, um, I believe uh, Psalm 83, Isaiah 38, that comes later. But uh, I think what we're looking at right now is Psalm 83, and, and uh, you know, that may actually be occurring uh, with these tetrads at any, any time now, or next year or the year after. And uh, Isaiah uh, 19 is happening, it's on the news today. Um, so, this Yom Teruah um, could be it. Could be time to go home. Honestly, I, I really, I hope. I have great hope. Um, if it isn't, you know, I'll just dig in and we'll dig in together for another year uh, and, uh, and deal with it until we do get to go home. But uh, that's my... Uh, Net Khatef update for 2013. Shalom, my friends.